at the question that is apparently occupying the great minds of our times. Was Adolf Hitler, the dictator of Nazi Germany, a socialist? Of course Hitler was a socialist. One only needs to look at the definition of collectivism and socialism to see why they are synonymous to each other. And the word synonym means a word that means exactly or nearly the same as another word in the same language. So basically the word shut is a synonym for close. Well it's no different to the word socialism. Socialism is synonymous to the word collectivism. Now this is what it really all boils down to. Was Hitler an individualist, in other words a capitalist, or was he a collectivist? and that's not going to go down too well for you, is it? I'll talk about why I dislike engaging this discussion so much at the end, but for now... The reason why you don't like engaging in this conversation is simply because of the fact that Hitler was a collectivist and you don't like facts, reason and logic. I have to admit though that I was honestly baffled by some of the arguments here because I think I have rarely seen this level of being highly deceptive or flat out wrong combined with a large dose of smugness. That stretch coming for someone as arrogant as yourself, but I'm not really that surprised to be perfectly honest with you. Now let's see you try and deny the fact that Hitler was a collectivist. National socialism, not democratic socialism like Bernie Sanders. There's a huge- one is fascism right wing, one is not. They're both socialism. And he's right in what he says, because you can't have democratic socialism, there's no such thing. And the reason why it's an oxymoron is simply because of the fact that you're faced with the economic calculation problem and the knowledge problem. And this is something that's inescapable when it comes to socialism. Hitler used the idea of democracy, mob rule, to infringe on the rights of the minority. Again, I don't see what's so wrong about of what he just stated, because he's completely right in what he said. Hitler was a collectivist, and this is what collectivism's all about. Collectivism subordinates the rights of individuals and places the group above the individual. And this is exactly what Hitler did, this is exactly what socialism's all about. It's a question of, was Hitler an individualist? In other words, a capitalist, or was he someone who supported collectivism, in other words socialism? And as we know, Hitler was someone who favoured collectivism, he was strongly against the individual. Now, claiming Hitler was a liberal socialist is already a pretty hot take, since it's an oxymoron. <laughs> you can certainly say that again. Stripping individuals of their individual rights, stripping them of their individual liberty, and then forcing them into a collective group, and then calling yourself liberal. <laughs> Now, who was Gregor Strasser? He was the de facto leader of what one could call the more anti-capitalist wing of the NSDAP up until 1932. Due to the intentionally vague language of Hitler and the Nazi platform, a bunch of people flocked to the party, who Hitler himself didn't necessarily agree with politically. This led to strong division inside the party and to the establishment of two different camps. One was the group around Gregor Strasser and his brother, who genuinely saw capitalism as a broken system that needed to be replaced and the folkish nationalist wing around Hitler, who didn't see it that way, and Hitler himself was always more interested in coming to power than in genuine policy goals of the party. I am a socialist, and a very different kind of socialist from your rich friend Count Reventlow, Adolf Hitler told Otto Strasser on 1930 and May 21st. Now, it doesn't matter about the quotes, put that aside for a second, what really matters is it all boils down to a question of, was Adolf Hitler a collectivist or was he an individualist? Well, let's look at the definition of individualism. Individualism means that it's the freedom of the economy from government intervention. It means that the people of society, individually, are free and economically independent to pursue their own economic goals and paths in the absence of state intervention. How the hell could you pass off Nazi Germany as being something individualist? or Adolf Hitler being individualist. This is the same Adolf Hitler who nationalised the automobile industry in Austria, had centralised newspaper and radio so that he controlled what people would listen to and what people would read. The same Nazi Germany that nationalised education and nationalised the likes of the healthcare system, etc. and even nationalised the churches in Austria. How the hell did you draw to this conclusion that all of that nationalisation and political centralisation somehow became the definition of individualism? 
The fact of the matter is, you're being contradicted by the definition of individualism. And why do I point that out? Because like I've said about a million times, no one can ever pull capitalism outside of individualism and throw it under another word for socialism. Anybody who tries to redefine capitalism and pull it outside of individualism and throw it under a word such as collectivism are completely irrational. Capitalism's an individualist system. This isn't an opinion. It's backed by fact. It's an antinomous system. Do you even understand the definition of the word antinom? This is the same Nazi Germany that subordinated the rights of individuals and forced everybody into a collective group under a dictatorship. Yes, there was an element of capitalism through privatisation, but what you completely ignore is the fact that capitalism is about the market that regulates itself. Capitalism is not about socialist government regulation such as your socialist price controls, socialist protectionist tariffs, etc, etc. Capitalism is about the freedom of the marketplace defined under individualism, the freedom of the economy, the freedom to trade, the freedom to do business, the freedom for the market to regulate prices itself, not about some central government controlling and directing the economy. And here is the definition of socialism here. Socialism means, among other things, using political agencies to provide goods and services that otherwise would be provided privately in the marketplace. In its most extreme form, socialism means government direction of the economy as a whole. Socialism in its milder expressions takes the form of nationalized industries, the Chilean copper mining industry under Allende, Pakistan's petrochemical sector, and heavy industries under Bhutto. Government ownership or direction of firms, Alfa Romeo under Mussolini, the Japan National Railway, direct government provision of goods and services, the British Health Service, or government management of nominally private marketplace activities, farm subsidies in France, Fannie Mae in the United States. The Strasser group of the party is often described as the left wing of the party, but in my opinion this is very misleading because if we look at some other statements by Gregor Strasser, the differences between him and the, for instance, Social Democrats become very clear. What is socialism? It's often difficult to get an honest or rational answer to that question. Idealistic socialists in the West usually will tell you that socialism is anything other than what actual socialist governments have achieved in the real world. What is important to keep in mind is that socialism is not a particular set of political conditions, but a specific kind of economic arrangement. Socialism is not identical with left-wing politics, and socialism is not confined to the left. The various kinds of political systems that have arisen from socialist economies from Soviet authoritarianism to India's licensed Raj, are in no small part responses to the inadequacies and contradictions inherent in socialist systems of production and distribution. Taken from the same pamphlet of which Crowder got the other quote from, The spirit of our national socialist idea has to overpower the spirit of liberalism and false democracy if there is to be a Third Reich at all. Deeply rooted in organic life, we have realized that the false belief in the equality of man is the deadly threat with which liberalism destroys people and nation, culture and morals, violating the deepest levels of our being. We have to reject with fanatical zeal the frequent lie that people are basically equal and equal in regard to their influence in the state and their share in power. People are unequal. They are unequal from birth, become more unequal in life, and are therefore to be valued unequally in their position in society and the state. Not very egalitarian there. First of all, socialism's got nothing at all to do with liberalism, as socialism seeks to abolish private individual ownership of property. Therefore, you're against individuals' rights and individuals' liberty. Secondly, this idea of egalitarianism, that's all it is. It's an ideological point of view from your view of socialism. Everything is down to theory when it comes to people like you. Never anything at all to do with the real world. The real world of socialism is exactly what we saw in Venezuela, the Soviet Union, North Korea, 
Cuba and all of these regimes and what we've seen in every single one of them is a dictator and a 1% elite where everybody else lives in extreme poverty. That's the real world of the socialism we've seen. You socialists don't understand the difference between theory and practice. Everything when it comes to socialism to yourself is down to a cardboard box. You try to fit socialism around purely based on theory and you completely ignore human nature. You completely ignore economic reality. There's two things that defy you. Number one, individuals make up society and individuals have self-interest. And number two, the economic reality that you're faced with, with the economic calculation problem and the knowledge problem. I'd like to ask you to take a look at the amount of time of this video that has already passed. And now consider that we're not even at the historical arguments yet. It's just the setup that requires so much cleaning up that it could be a video on its own. I hope you can see why I was hesitant in making this video because honestly, all you can do is laugh. No, what's laughable is the fact that you try to pass off Nazi Germany as somehow anti-socialist, despite the fact that nationalised education, healthcare, churches, the automobile industry, politically centralised the likes of radio and newspaper, even although political centralisation is a big part of what defines collectivism and socialism, and the word collectivism is synonymous to the word socialism, but most importantly is the way you try to pass him off as if he favoured capitalism, even although individualism is all about the freedom of individuals of society, free from government intervention, essentially defining the free market system. You try to pull capitalism outside of what essentially defines it, and you try to redefine capitalism around fascism, because that's the type of dishonest, you know, person that you are. By the way, the trade unions I just mentioned were destroyed by the Nazis and their leaders were sent to concentration camps. And from that point on, workers had no way of effectively negotiating better pay or working conditions. And like I said, Adolf Hitler abolished the Weimar Republic's trade unions and simply replaced it with his very own, known as the German Labour Front. The last point in this section of the article is that Hitler combated inflation that resulted from all the spending by not allowing wages to rise with prices, which is only part of the story. While price and wage restrictions did exist under the Nazis, the main tool in combating inflation was the introduction of something called the MEFO bill. Government wage and price restrictions does not result in lower inflation, so it doesn't combat inflation, it results in higher inflation, because the high price in the market was signifying that there's a shortage, when the government therefore tries to artificially lower the cost below market value, it results in consumer demand driving up in an area where there is an underlying reality of a shortage, which in turn results in inflation spiralling out of control. Which was essentially a second currency issued by a bogus company set up by the Nazis. This allowed them to spend vast amounts of money on rearmament without their surrounding countries being able to notice when taking a look at the state budget. Essentially it was just fraud and when the time came to pay out the issued MEFO bills, the government printed money and uh, went into a world war, in which they plundered the conquered countries to prop up their immense spending. Not sure what about that is supposed to resemble left-wing policy, but okay. All government spending is socialist and we call it spendthrift leftism. When we speak about capitalism, it's about individuals of society, free from government intervention, having a 100% responsibility over their own finances. Therefore, all state subsidies and all the taxation is of course socialist, and the only way the government can spend people's money is through taxing them. The government has to forcibly remove money from people's hands in order to pay for things. Government spending is socialist. To try and pass that off as something capitalist is completely erroneous. Anyway, I'd like to get into a bit more detail about the economy in Nazi Germany here because if you would want to make the argument that Hitler was a socialist or by extension the Nazis were left wing, this would show in the enactic economic policies. Of course Crowder doesn't go that far but unfortunately this debate is bigger than just Steven Crowder. The economy of Nazi Germany is a very complex issue and there are frequent disagreements of its role in the Nazi state, but I'll try to limit it to what is relevant for us. If we look at the schematized version of how the Nazis organized the economy, we can see that there was quite a lot of overhead involved. 
Here's where someone from the Libertarian School of Economics might say that this resembles a planned economy, in the style of other self-proclaimed socialist countries of the 20th century. Important to notice here though is that the means of production remained in private hand under Nazi rule. That's the erroneous lies that you're telling people about Nazi Germany's economy, because it's a historical fact that in Nazi Germany, the state completely controlled the means of production through strong government regulation. You might like to think that you are the owner of a private business, but See if your private business has been strongly regulated by the state, you may as well call the boss of your company the government itself. After all, the government was earning just as much, if not more, in the private companies through taxation and the protectionist tariffs than the private companies were. More importantly, the state was actually strongly regulating the private companies, dictating how much they could produce and even what they could produce. And in the evidence of a book titled The Vampire Economy, it describes exactly what the Nazi Germany economy was like. And it stated that for businesses, that did not live up to what the state dictated, those private businesses would be punished for it. To try and pass that off as something free market or that of true private ownership is just laughable to say the least. So what you're doing is, is you're completely ignoring the fact that the state completely controlled through strong government regulation over the private sector and then kidding on that that has no influence. 